Fulton County, Georgia's district attorney, Fannie Willis, is expected to indict Trump this week. That would be his fourth indictment. Now, ahead of that likely announcement, Trump is already trying to encourage one of the potential witnesses in that case to not testify against him, which is bad because that is something known as witness tampering, which is illegal. Now, he's doing this, mind you, publicly on social media where all of us can see, including the prosecutor. He wrote the following message on Truth Social. I'm reading reports that failed former Lieutenant Governor of Georgia, Jeff Duncan, will be testifying before the Fulton County Grand Jury. He shouldn't. I barely know him, but he was, right from the beginning of this witch hunt, a nasty disaster for those looking into the election fraud that took place in Georgia. He refused having a special session to find out what went on, became very unpopular with Republicans. I refused to endorse him and fought the truth all the way. Yeah. So pretty shameless there. Now, if it wasn't already obvious enough that that was blatant witness tampering, well, legal experts confirmed, yeah, that is indeed exactly what it looks like. That's witness tampering. I mean, we shouldn't need their confirmation, but I mean, it's important still, right, for the layperson, I guess. So, for example, former U.S. Attorney Barb McQuaid says it's witness tampering in real time. Law professor and political scientist Anthony Michael Kreese called it blatantly unlawful. And all of us know that he is going to continue to do things like this because he's not going to go to jail. He's going to get away with it. Whereas if a normal person did that, we all know it would happen. They would be held in pretrial custody. So... This is what happens when you're an elite in this country, right? You can do anything, including tamper with witnesses out in the open, attack the judge, and um, you're going to be just fine. Now, he wasn't done tweeting about this potential fourth indictment because he also put out this message to the grand jury saying, quote, Would someone please tell the Fulton County grand jury that I did not tamper with the election? The people that tampered with it were the ones that rigged it. Now, he later says, I would be happy to show this info to the grand jury. Now, he's presumably referring to a report from CNN that the Fulton County District Attorney's Office has text messages and emails that tie him and his legal team to an unauthorized voting systems breach in Coffee County, Georgia. And of course, we'll have to wait to see the indictment to confirm this. But if it's true, this is a massive bombshell because the rigging that he accused Democrats of doing, his team did. Like this is this is massive stuff here. But need I remind you that Trump was also indicted a third time recently as well. And he's not done tweeting about that case as well, because last week he attacked the judge overseeing that case. And predictably, he did the same exact thing again this week. He called her very biased and unfair on Truth Social in response to something that she told a January 6th insurrectionist. And he also tweeted a post where she's called, quote, an Obama left-wing activist judge in D.C. whose husband also got appointed by Obama as a D.C. judge openly admitted she's running election interference against Trump. I mean, he is literally physically incapable of shutting the fuck up. And it is astonishing to me that not a single person in his circle is like, hey, man, maybe let's not talk about the cases. But that's all he's tweeting about. He'll retweet some election stuff from time and again, but he keeps tweeting about his trials and attacking prosecutors, judges, tampering with witnesses. Now, he says this after that same judge who we just attacked warned him about engaging in this sort of behavior. She stated, quote, the more a party makes inflammatory statements about this case, which could taint the jury pool or intimidate potential witnesses, the greater the urgency will be that we proceed to trial to ensure a jury pool from which we can select an impartial jury. So he is quite literally making things worse for himself. And Newsweek adds, legal experts have now suggested that Trump may be spoken to by the judge over his latest selection social media postings. And I have to remind everyone that even if the judge talks to him about this, do you think that a normal person would only get a stern talking to? Of course not. And it's such a redundant point to make because I've said this a hundred times. Other people have pointed this out. You can see it. But it's so important that this fact is not lost on us. We are getting a real time look at how our justice system treats elites, even when they brazenly break the law. Do any of us expect Trump to stop tweeting about his trials, to stop attacking witnesses or judges? Of course not. But at the same time that none of us expect his behavior to change, we also don't expect any action, right? Nobody's going to take him into custody. I would be shocked if that happened. But to echo what I said last week about this, everything that we're seeing is not taking place in a vacuum. This absolute lunatic 
is doing all of this and getting away with it. And at the same time, he is the leading contender for the Republican Party's 2024 presidential primary. That is so wild. It's not surprising, but it's still shocking when you step back and look at all of the details, even if we're normalized to it, right? The stronghold that he has on the Republican Party's voters, it just cannot be overstated. In fact, GOP strategists worry that if he somehow loses the nomination, which is unlikely, but if that happens, the entire Republican Party will suffer due to lower voter turnout among the GOP's base. And it's not just that a large portion of the GOP's base is going to be disillusioned if he loses. A good percentage of them might actually resort to violence. And Mehdi Hassan had a really important warning about this on MSNBC, and this aired yesterday, but uh, I'm gonna play a clip from it because it's very important. So what happens if Trump is convicted and sentenced to prison, especially this side of an election? What will his supporters do? My NBC News colleague, Vaughn Hilliard, asked one of them at a rally in New Hampshire on Tuesday. If Donald Trump were to be found guilty by a jury, <laughs> where, where, where do you see this going? Uh, civil war because we can't live together obviously now you might just dismiss that as the rantings of a cultish trump superfan just big talk this country's nowhere near a civil war that's hyperbole so have a listen to florida gop congressman matt gates speaking alongside trump himself at the iowa state fair yesterday i cannot stand these people that are destroying our country they're opening our borders they're weaponizing our federal law enforcement against patriotic americans who love this nation as we should we are having a great time at the fair we love standing with you but we know that only through force do we make any change in a corrupt town like washington dc only by force can we make change in dc that's what he said Still not enough for you? Then listen also to what Michigan Republican State Representative Matt Maddock, whose wife, Mee Sean, a former co-chair of the Michigan Republican Party and one of the 16 fake electors who was criminally charged last month. Listen to what he had to say earlier this month at a GOP fundraiser per an audio recording obtained by the news site The Messenger. If the government continues to weaponize these departments against conservatives and the, the, the citizens that are then the taxpayers, you know, what's going to happen to this country? Someone's going to get so pissed off they're going to shoot someone. That's what's going to happen. Or we're going to have a civil war or some sort of revolution. That, that's where this, is, where this is going. After that audio was released, Maddox issued this statement to the messenger, writing that he was simply exercising his right to free speech in the privacy of his own home. We've reached out to Maddox ourselves for comment, but have yet to hear back. Now, I don't know about you, but stuff like that sends a chill down my spine. Elected Republicans casually discussing, implicitly threatening civil war, shootings, the use of force. One recent study from Professor Robert Pape at the University of Chicago found that from April the 6th, 2023 to June 26th, 2023, Americans agreeing that the use of force is justified to restore Donald Trump to the presidency increased from 4.5 percent to 7 percent or the equivalent of an estimated shift from 12 million to 18 million American adults. In a moment, I'll speak to Professor Barbara F. Walter from the University of California, who is an expert on civil conflict, author of the book How Civil Wars Start. She says we are closer to civil war than any of us would like to believe. Yeah. And this is because the base of just one of two major political parties that we have in this country has devolved into a full-blown cult. And the implications of this are absolutely horrifying. This political cult is tearing our country apart. And I'm not trying to suggest that everything was peachy keen before the rise of Trump, but he has been able to mobilize the GOP's already insane base in a way that's only comparable to some of the most influential demagogues in human history, literally. And even when Trump is out of the picture, this problem is not going to go away. We're going to have to grapple with the reality that a large portion of this country is that extreme, that unhinged, that detached from reality, that stupid, that self-centered, that hateful. And there are still a lot of people that have deluded themselves into thinking that you can win over a lot of these folks with economic policies or by calling them. But that's not going to happen. These people want retribution and economic policies that specifically benefit at them isn't going to satiate their thirst for vengeance, right? They're out for blood. They feel angry. And Trump is somebody who is 
a vessel for their anger, and nothing else can compare to that. So whenever we talk about Trump's trials and his blatant disregard for the law, we have to look at the broader context here and the way that his base responds to that, because he is either intentionally or unintentionally shoring up support by acting in this exact way, by attacking the judge, by witness tampering, right? And if he were to go to jail for witness tampering, not going to happen, but if that did happen, his supporters would rally around him and love him even more, because that's what they've done in the past, right? So we have no reason to think there's going to be some straw that breaks the camel's back with regard to Donald Trump and his criminality. So in a twisted way, he actually has an incentive to act out in the way he has been. He's playing a game of chicken with prosecutors and the U.S. judicial system, and he's winning. They don't want to take him into pretrial custody and deal with the wrath of his supporters. So, of course, they're just going to let him get away with the same shit he's been getting away with. He's effectively able to hold the entire judicial system hostage, and he knows it, right? He loves this power. This is perhaps the quintessential case of absolute power corrupting absolutely. And it's going to continue to happen, right? If he's indicted again, which is likely going to happen this week, He's going to act out, he's going to do more witness tampering and attacking, and nothing will be done about it because he knows they're too afraid of his base to take action and take him into custody. Penis and balls, vagina. Pe pe penis and balls, vagina. Pe pe P-word and balls, vagina. Pe pe P-word and balls, vagina. A ass, gum. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.